right, one more thing I wanted to add to the discussion here, and I almost left it out, um, is the old USGI army wool blanket here. Um, and it really, it doesn't fit exactly in with the discussion of the modularity of the sleep system, but I can't tell you how often I actually use this thing, whether it's underneath me in the hammock, whether it's on top, whatever. This thing has had a lot of use over the years. It's a 80% wool, um, not a ton of loft, but a lot of layers if you, uh, you know, if you wrap it over. So in the context of mixing older type technology like the bivy, uh, even, you know, a fleece blanket in there, a fleece, fleece liner with sort of some newer things like the insulated pad and some of the smaller type of spirofill and down bags and stuff. Um, it, it, it does fit into that discussion and uh, it, it's worth mentioning. So you strap that to the top or the bottom of your pack, the back of your pack, um, and, you know, becomes a whole other, uh, layer to the you know DIY MSS sort of uh, philosophy and I have to say too uh, you know I really value having a wool blanket with me I don't take it all the time um, but but I use it quite frequently I'll throw some pictures in here you can kind of see it in some of the different setups we've done whether it's tent whether it's tarp shelter uh, or, or in the hammock it's it definitely has its place and you know I'll watch a a Dave Canterbury or a Bushcraft 412 video, uh, you know, talking about a wool blanket and how to use that in a survival or bushcraft uh, frontier type situation with as much enthusiasm as I'll watch Luke on Outdoor Gear Review or, or someone, uh, you know, like Wahiker do a, um, a tech review on a $400 sleeping bag. So <clears throat> really, you know, I, I do like to mix and match styles and philosophies and uh, when we go out into the woods, and I know a lot of you do the same thing too, so I just thought I'd throw this one in there as well. Okay, so let's get some of the stuff out of the way here and actually take a look at this. This is an actual army blanket, not one of these cheap knockoffs. There's some decent ones out there that are 70%. You can get from Sportsman's Guide and some other places. Um, some of the poorer quality ones from Harbor Freight that are 60% wool. I mean, they'll work a little bit, but you certainly have to have a lot more blanket uh, for the insulative power that you get out of something that's 80, 90. Boy, 100% is really going to cost you, but that would, that would be ideal. Tons of loft. Lots of weight, though. So this one at 80%, 20 polyester, is uh, right at 4, well, give or take, at 4 pounds. But, as you can see, nicely sewn edges. Every edge is sewn completely. I mean, this is a great blanket. When you shake this baby out, you can get it to loft up a little bit. Um, I usually fold it in half uh, and just double up my layers on it. It's a twin size blanket. Um, and man, I can't say enough about it. You can see how, just how tight the weave is on there a really good quality blanket. I got this from a surplus store uh, back in the 90s and um, I'll tell you if you can get a hold of one for a decent price, there's a few on eBay. Um, any surplus store has these laying around all over the place although since they're in uh, kind of higher demand nowadays um, watch out for the price gouging. This one back in the 90s cost me $20. Uh, you know, nowadays this blanket is 60 bucks uh, and above, so kind of watch out what people are trying to charge you for it. But, uh, you know, in, in, in the spirit of adding this thing to the system for uh, modularizing your sleep or just another tool in the toolbox, uh, highly recommended.